Hello, one and all, and welcome to Talking to Orville, a very special day on Talking to Orville, because we got more people to talk about the Orville with. This is the very first live show containing the union. That's right. I have uh, a, a group of individuals that are leaders in the Orville fandom here to talk about season four, to let you in on the inside track that we've been sitting on for a long time now and now we can let you in and tell you some of the things that we know uh let, let's just bring everybody on uh elise hargreaves how's it going hi i'm good thank you for having me <laughs> no problem eric the smoke moran from a planetary step hey how's it going guys going hey. very good mike richards from mission log thanks jp thanks for having me on Glad to have you all here and never, never late to the party. Got here just in time. PJ from Orville Nation is hey, here. Hey, JP. Hey, we everybody. All made it. How's your arm doing? It's uh, well, it, it, I, I just had a little issue and I was trying to finish. I was trying to fix the issue with one arm. So I, I took a little bit longer, but it's good. Thanks. Well, it could be worse. You can only have one leg like Gordon. <laughs> What's going on? We're here talking about season four. And actually, before we, we get going, let's just get the audience. I, I've played this clip before, but some people are new here and they need a refresher uh, of what Seth MacFarlane recently said just a week or two ago. Uh, this is not all the information we have. This is just a little uh, a little taste of, of, of a little nudge of, of what's to come for fans of the Orville. Yeah. Okay. Ernie and Bert. Valerie, Bert and Ernie? Yeah. Okay. Early All family right. guy joke, Peter okay. Griffin. Anyway, so yeah, sometimes you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta earn. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, the you, one you, you want. give them even you at your them, stage. Yes, you've, even at my you've been stage. Hugely even successful. Stage. But but you know, it's like with like anything, the passion projects aren't always like. Look, I uh, the Orville was a passion project. I, I say was, but I don't really mean was because there there will be more. Mm -hmm. But um, uh. You know, Family Guy makes a bunch of money. Ted makes a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. um, love both those shows, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there, there there is a little bit of a balance. There are things that that uh, that that you give, and and in return, you get to make this. I mean, that was kind of how the Western worked in many ways. I there will be more. He doesn't mean was. What what are you guys' thoughts on on that comment from Seth? Well, I was really excited. So I mean, as soon as I heard him say it, I was like, well, touchdown, touchdown, yeah. you know. So I'm patient. I can wait. I'll let him cook because yeah. we know we already know all the fans know that that our true over fans already know that Steph already has things to work. He's, you know, already written things. He's had mm -hmm. stuff on the show for the right time and right opportunity. So mm -hmm. this is the right time and the right opportunity. And it's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and the writer's strike and, the, and then the actor's strike just threw the industry into disarray. I mean, I think in a perfect world, season four would have been announced sort of sort of right as the writer's strike was kicking off. Uh, but that got that delayed that and then the actor's strike. And then I think the success of Ted uh, and now what just got announced with Ted. Uh, uh, the two. second series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, season two um, has all sort of sort of spread things out. Um, work that should have gotten done during COVID didn't get done. Contracts that should have been fulfilled during the writer's strike and the actor's strike didn't get fulfilled. So, you know, once again, just a long delay. But, uh, um, 
JP, you'll talk more about, you know, what you heard, you know, mm-hmm. a while ago, uh, what we heard, you know, a while ago also, and then we're recently asked to share and sort of how we got to this point. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very confident that we'll see a season four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, extremely. Uh, I think that there's no doubt, really, because like it's been on top 10 in Hulu's drama series for the whole time. Yeah. So it's like a no brainer. Like, why wouldn't they renew it? Yeah, the audience just keeps growing, growing. This is something I've been paying attention to every day of my life for God, five, six, seven years seven, at this point. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Time flies. <laughs> and uh, the audience is always growing every single day on, on uh, this channel, Talking to Orville. I get comments from people saying, hey, what's this show? I'm going to start watching this show. Or they just love the show. And, um, and, and, you know, I'll get 20, 30, 40 million views a month on Orville promos. And, uh, but what I've known since last year, um, I was told that the Orville's coming back by very high, (laughs) very, I don't say sources, I call them friends, uh, but a very high level friend uh, told me the Orville's coming back. And this is, if you guys remember uh, last year when they, when they had, um, all that they were in the all the lawyer meetings about whether or not there's going to be a new season or not and then someone had a source saying that the source is no it's not going to happen because they were in the room and i was like well i got better sources than that uh, and i was talking to those sources while those meetings were going on and they were frustrated they were absolutely frustrated because you know they were being told things like oh the audience might not be big enough or it's very expensive things like that and then Right at the tail end, I get the phone call that uh, they're coming back, uh, but it's going to be a while. I, and I didn't know how, how long a while is, maybe two years, something like that. But this is already a year ago. And uh, uh, but I didn't know at the time. Now I know. But I, at the time, I didn't know if that if it's going to be a movie, if it's going to be a full season, uh, a couple mini movies, something like that. Uh, but now from the Pippity toppiest, most trusted people, <laughs> person you could think of, people you could think of. Um, I have gotten actual confirmation that they have been picked up for a fourth season. And they're just waiting for some contractual obligations of content that has to be made. Kind of uh, Seth was just talking about that in, in the video clip. You know, he's gotta he's gotta make the things that he that he's that they want him to make so he can make the thing that he wants to make, which is the Orville. Uh, and, uh, so I've been given confirmation that it is a fourth season. Uh, what do you guys uh, have to say about all that? Yay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how long it's going to be. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I would say perfect world four season, then, you know, seven seasons plus four movies maybe, but, yeah. um, and you know, anything can happen. And I think that, uh, You know, there is some truth to those people that when we leaked that, you know, we have it from a very high source that season four Mm -hmm. is going to happen. And folks said, I'll believe it when I see it. There is some credibility to that. You know, anybody who has that kind of mindset, God love you. I mean, I I, I feel the same way. And, you know, my industry and my personal life don't count chickens before your hatch, before they hatch. But I'm confident that that's what the plan is. And I think Mm -hmm. we'll see some interesting stuff. And I think we all have some some good ideas about what uh, what we might see. And I think JP, you even have a uh, uh, a script you're working on, or is that, uh, or is that oh, just a rumor the... I heard that's unsubstantiated? No, it is. It is, it is true. I'm working on an Orville uh, f- uh, fan film script right now that's going to be produced by uh, Airy Studios, who does Axonar, uh, the Axonar films. Uh, two more films coming out, uh, hopefully this summer. Uh, they are all principal principal photography is complete, is done. They just got to edit it all together and promote it and all that stuff uh so working on that it is hard to work on that because i'm so busy right now but once i'm not so busy <laughs> i'll be able to dedicate more time but i do have uh the the outline uh complete and character description and stuff like that and i just gotta start writing the story it's a very unique story um not a lot of people get to write a story in this format so uh, i'm kind of learning about the format in order to to uh to do a better job at it because i want this to be something that's so good as far as story goes and the quality of it that uh that the orville production themselves 
are going to be proud of it because it's all inspired yeah. by their work. Nice. Now, it, if if I can ask you the for, you're talking about a format other than a normal screenplay format. Correct. It's okay. a different format. It's a different format. Uh, allows you to uh, have a lot more information, uh, and you can have some fun. And then I have some fun ideas that I'm throwing into the format to kind of make it even more realistic for for the viewers. Interesting. Nice. By the way, JP. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, because you're almost at 100K. Yes. Is there a big party coming up or what? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no except for I'll just go, I'm at 100K. Here's a Twitter post about being at 100K. Uh, uh, and it's happening very rapidly. I get about a 1,000 subscribers every couple days. Wow. So it, um, I'm expecting another week or two, and I'll be at that 100K mark. And then I have to change my whole channel around because I'm trying to get remonetized. I'm, I'm allowed to uh, apply for remonetization on June 23rd, the day after my birthday. And uh, but I have to make a lot of changes on my content and, and organize some stuff before I apply so that they approve me. Yeah. YouTube can be tricky. It gets uh, trickier and trickier every year. Yeah. Don't you get a plug for that as well? I assume so. I, I mean, I guess that'd be like nice. One. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not counting on any. I, you know, I never think about accolades like that because you got to celebrate that though, JP. Hundred K, you got to celebrate for that. sure. I, I'll do a, li I'll do a live show, I'm sure, <laughs> and, and 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 tell people. But I, uh, years ago, I decided. I mean, when I first started doing talking to Orville and doing YouTube, I wanted to be a YouTuber and and all that stuff. But as the years went by. I decided I don't want to be a YouTuber. I just want to create content that people enjoy and build a community. And I'm focusing all of that energy uh, towards the Orville because I love the Orville so much. It's the only franchise that truly gives me joy and truly gives me things to think about in life. And it's made me a better person. Um, so really my whole motivation now is the fandom the show, the people that work on the show, and just supporting all of them, and hopefully we all have a good time doing it, and I get a million subscribers doing it, but I don't really care about the <laughs> subscribers. But J JP, I love that you say that because our, you know, our goal of Mission Log is to, you know, to pull the message, more morals and meanings out of an episode of, you know, that other sci-fi franchise, mm -hmm. and because th because the Orville is so rich. Yeah. Uh, in those same things that that my goal when I sit down, if I'm going to spend an hour of my time, the most precious resource we have, yeah, you, know, you, can, you can never get more. Um, what am I going to pull out of this that's going to make me a better human being? Mm -hmm. And from the Orville, it's quite a bit. And I love that mm -hmm. what you just said was doing this has made you a better person. I feel yeah. like doing this has made me a better person. In that's my case, awesome. by so little, like it's got me up to like, just like barely up to like basic human standards. But still for <laughs> me, that's really good. Yeah, my, yeah, it's great. And it's, 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 the show is so inspiring. And, and what I do for the last couple of years is I just look for things to inspire me, to nudge me to be, uh, uh, to do the right thing and be a better person. And uh, sometimes doing YouTube and the things that YouTube do, does to, to you as a creator, you have to keep creating, it has to be better every time or they're not going to show it to anybody. Uh, I decided to let all that go because I'm, I'm a human being. I'm not an algorithm. So I'm just here to create and to support the community and bring the community mm -hmm. together, which is why I'm, uh, I decided to start doing live streams like this. Last week, um, I had uh, five Orville fans on the live show, and now we got some community leaders for the live show, which, you know, hopefully we're doing it more and more. And then eventually, uh, <laughs> once we get closer to more episodes of the Orville, I'm going to start bringing on cast members, crew members, uh, firm production, and we just chat about the show morals from the show and just about life just mm -hmm. to give people a little bit more uh, of a window into what it takes to make a show like this and to be part of a show like this yeah i think if you aim for authenticity rather than success people yeah. connect to that like they can feel it so um i think you should definitely just keep doing that <laughs> That's that's the plan because I agree with I agree with that sentiment. I mean, the things that I watch, I just want someone to be real yeah. and, and, and not super showy. I'm already I have nothing against uh, AI art, but I'm really sick of looking at it. It all looks the same to me and looks cheesy to me. So 
I'm, I'm already seeing AI. And I'm like, ah, I'm bored of this already. Let's get some some authentic stuff. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I got to put this up from Maria. And actually, Maria, I might be contacting you soon for, for something I'm planning for the summer. Uh, Maria says, that's how it's done, JP. You have to love what you do. And I love making content for the Orville. I've tried making other things. I just don't enjoy it as much. All right, Paul Raymond, keep up the good work, guys. We're still waiting for the Orville's debut back here in the UK. Boy, we're a bunch of saps. <laughs> <laughs> we're all waiting for a, a new Orville uh, a debut. But how did, uh, Mike, I wanted to ask you, how did you get started covering the Orville? That was kind of an interesting journey. Um, essentially, I was a, uh, a very active fan of Mission Log, the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had done some podcasting with, with my work uh, with the airline. I do quite a bit of uh, production in the in the training and and safety world so voiceover creating content things like that i had a little bit of a leg up there i did do a podcast for a, a short period of time that was uh, still available on uh, aviationtutorials.com it was uh it's a it's not a behind a paywall but you do have to subscribe to it to get it mm -hmm. and uh, it was called the pro pilot podcast so between those two things kind of came together and i had done a show or two on trek trek.fm uh the the podcasting network and john champion had heard that around the time that rod wanted to start uh expanding the lineup the mission log uh, lineup to cover the orville um and he approached me and, and asked if i wanted to do it so uh jessica and i got together on um one friday morning back in late 2021 uh in the lead up to season three cut a demo and I feel like we just hit the ground running, man. It uh, that that demo that we did, that audition, that became episode one. Uh, just all we had to do was cut a little bit of a uh, an intro and an outro to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pick our bumper music and uh, interstitial stuff, and and that was it. So that that's how I kind of got uh, got selected to to cover the Orville. It's it was a wild ride. I had no idea what I was saying yes to, but I'm very <laughs> thankful that I did. You guys yeah. are a great duo. <laughs> I, uh, thanks. Thanks, PJ. I really appreciate that. It seems like we, you know, we bounce off each other well. And I think we have, you know, enough differences of opinion that, you know, we don't get argumentative, but we can like really kind of keep peeling back the onion until we both understand something that quite honestly, neither one of us understood going into it. So I think that's a, you know, the, the, the goal of a conversation. And just so everyone knows, uh, for everyone here, I have uh, in the video description, uh, links to everybody here, Elise, Eric, PJ, Mike Richards. I got uh, a couple of Twitter links and YouTube links, uh, all description under everyone's name. Uh, let me ask the same question of, of everybody here. Elise, how did you get started with the Orville? Um, well, I've been a huge fan of Seth for as long as I can remember, like Family Guy, American Dad. Um, and my friend, he wanted to make like a Game Boy game for the Orville, like mm -hmm. a 2D pixelated game. And he asked me to write the script, like the dialogue for it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'll write it. And it was so fun to write. Um, so he was making that and he was showing me some of the artwork and the colors and stuff. It wasn't right. I'm like, look what we can do on PC. Like how cool mm -hmm. would it be if we did it like that? And then he's like, well, why don't you do the PC version and I'll do the Game Boy version? I was like, okay. So I got into um, coding and art and, and gaming and I made the 2D version that you played, JP. I played it a few that times. Was hilarious <laughs> when you played it. So it's, funny. A, it's a great story. And, and you have uh, the sequel coming up, right? Yeah. So the 3D version now that I'm working on. Um, which has been so much fun. Like I love Minecraft and I've always mm -hmm. been a huge fan of Minecraft and building big structures. I built the Orville on Minecraft, um, built like all these different things and then doing like a voxel version, which is pretty much like Minecraft, a 3D mm -hmm. version and now working on that, which pretty much I think, wait, all of you guys are in that game. <laughs> I was just thinking that same thing. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, I think everyone here is in yeah. the game. Yep. You're all in it. We're in a video game, you guys. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Eric, how did you get involved with the Orville? Because you got a planetary step, the Orville fan series. Right. And so basically, like like Elise, I've, I've been a fan of 
Seth since Cartoon Network days. And mm -hmm. basically when Seth, I knew Seth like was a big Star Trek fan like I was. When I did my Star Trek fan film, it was on the cusp of when they changed up a lot of the roles. And I was so like, you know, just, just depressed about it. And I remember when Orville came out, you know, I was already huge in the cosplay, and I remember debuting the uniform because no one was cosplaying them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from the Orville. So I remember, you know, when I cosplayed and I debuted at a con, I was I was a guest at. Steph, I shared it with Seth. Seth uh, reposted it on his page, on his Twitter mm -hmm. page, and I was already, like, saying, well, okay, you know what? I need to do an Orville fan short. When I did the fan short, I was dedicating him to Aaron Eisenberg because he was a good friend of mine. I named the ship after him. I remember reaching out to you, uh, JP, because I remember saying, "Hey, I, I I'll have you as like you know," because I was following JP a lot and 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 his love for the Orville, which even inspired me even more. And I said, "Well, I got to get him in the first the first pilot episode." And we filmed it. And when we filmed it, I didn't expect to get the response I got. So when I got the response, you know, having JP on board and, and having these collective great talented people to work with me and we put something really good together, it really started making me think. And I was like, maybe I could do, maybe I could do a series. Maybe I can mm -hmm. do a short series for a season one. Mm -hmm. So we basically, I put together a nice production crew and was fortunate enough to have people that were writers and everything else, they collaborated with me, and I was like, well, this is what I want to do, this is the story I want to tell, but have their own individual collective episodes, and so it's an overall story, but we have our own individual episodes and everything, and shorts and all, and then I did a expansion from that, from one of the episodes, with creating a puppet that was based on my character, yeah. and, and called the Puppetary Union, so it's been, a, it's been a nice ride, and then we hit this wall where the strike came. When the strike came, we wanted to show our solidarity. You know, mm -hmm. and for me, I was like, well, we're going to start production. And, and then life happened. A lot of the cast yeah. members, when you have a big cast, life happens to a lot of individuals. You know, cast members having kids and, and mm -hmm. everything, jobs and everything. So we were like, okay, we're going to come back. So I can happily announce as of today, after talking with all the cast members, we are coming back um, in late fall. We are going to start filming at the end of the summer, we're already looking at looking at production and, and everything else, and also bringing in one or two special guests mm -hmm. uh, to make appearances in our series. So it's a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait. Get those puppets out of the drawers. We need to see some more uh, Orville puppets. Oh, yeah, and I, I am going to be doing little mini shorts also to, to build off the audience, to get people hyped up That's and everything awesome. else. So, yeah, I cannot wait. I can't wait. PJ Orville Nation. How did you um, how did you learn about the Orville? What got you started on the Orville? Uh, let me just say I love the puppets, Eric. So uh, I love that. <laughs> um, uh, well, I was I I was kind of getting into watching YouTube, uh, and and J and JP was one of the people I was watching, and um, I was I was loving, and I I think it was probably you who got me on, hooked on the Orville. <laughs> uh, you know, getting getting me paid more attention to it, mm -hmm. and um, and I wanted to start the channel uh, for a while, and I had I, I I had to wait for like eight six eight months because I was we had a I was taking care of my sick aunt at the time, and then after you know unfortunately after she passed away I, I decided to well this is the time so we started the channel, and um, so yeah so JP's been an inspiration to all of us so thank you. Aww, I didn't set out for that. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a dumb <laughs> no, it's YouTuber. The truth. Truth. <laughs> yeah, for me it was uh, I was trying to be a YouTuber, putting out every type of video I could think of on every dumb topic in my dumb head, and uh, and then you know, a common thing a lot of YouTubers do is they talk about every TV show that comes out, and I was like, oh, there's a show called The Orville. Oh, it just came out last week. Let me check it out. It kind of looks a little bit like Star Trek. I love Star Trek, and then I, I watched it. I, I liked it okay i was like that's fun I, I made a video about it it's the first video i made that actually started getting views and then i watched the second episode command performance and i was like this is exactly the type of story i've been looking for the type of show i've been looking for 
because you know the the whole it had a little bit of a twilight zone uh, uh mood to it when they got put into the zoo calamon zoo but then the whole the whole crew was rallying together to save uh to save uh ed and kelly and i was like this is what i've been looking for and so i did another episode people watched that even more and i kept watching the orville kept doing episodes about it each week and and it kept growing growing i'm like okay i guess i'm talking about the orville now and then i was like oh talking the orville let's do it and so now that's the only thing i want to do i I love supporting the orville i love talking about it i love re-talking about it re-watching it all that stuff and now my main goal is to get season four to have such a high such a large audience of viewers that season five and six and seven don't have to wait they get announced uh, asap i think that's pretty much guaranteed <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm i'm hoping I, I you know season three did great but it was expensive they so the the studios were probably wanting a huge audience compared to what they were spending but it just yeah. takes time it's yeah. there it's getting there now it's already it's getting there so now they realize it so they they uh they picked them up for a fourth season we just have to wait uh for there to be time to make the fourth season and, and jp a, a couple of things i mean one that that command performance that that scene of you know kelly and ed and that calavan zoo just mm-hmm. you know when we write our recaps for mission log the orville we always mm-hmm. try to kind of make it you know bury a couple of easter eggs in there for the you know for the sci-fi connoisseur yeah and when we welcomed people into that one i said the episode where kelly and ed find out that people are alike all over which was the the episode title of a twilight zone i put that uh, into which, my review of that you episode. did oh very yeah. very good we think alike so um yeah, yeah just that twilight zone-esque um you know, vibe that you got from that one was was so good. Now, as far as the price tag on season three goes, you know, they've got this character development behind them now. So now they can really, and every time I've talked to Seth, he, he, he says they really wants to do that intimate TV uh, relationship study like, and he used the example of the wounded on Next Gen, you know, yeah. where, where O'Brien goes back and deals with his old captain. And, uh, you know, they have that that moment that, that lasts several minutes that you just really don't seem to be able to do on TV anymore to just just yeah. let breathe like that. That's the kind of thing they want to do that doesn't have a big price tag, but needs that character development. They have that mm. behind them now. Right. Yeah, it's regular time. primetime television won't give you time to, yeah. to to play out scenes. It has to you know it has to be cut, 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 cut yeah. next scene. But with uh, season three on on Hulu and then eventually Disney. There were scenes that were just long. They were they had, they had time to breathe, to really connect, to show reactions. Uh, of course, then I cut them all up into shorts, which I have to put them right back into primetime <laughs> television mode. But uh, uh, yeah, it's just it, it, it's so great. I'm so excited to see what they do with season four. And I've noticed from the fans, they've been talking a lot about bringing back the character of Tomlin. Um, from from the episode, if the star should appear, and right. Tomlin is played by, is it Max or Max, Bruce? Max Burkholder. That's uh, exactly plays Johnny it. and Ted. Yeah, and they I want can, him. I can sort of plug for my current project right now, but uh, but I won't. I'll let I'll save that for later. <laughs> uh, Mission Log is covering <laughs> Ted. By the way, there guys. You go. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. I want. I wanted to to cover Ted extensively, but then uh, YouTube. Uh, demonetize my channel. I'm like, well, crap, I got to go work a, a ride share 12 hours a day now. So I just don't have time. So I'm glad you're covering it because somebody needs to. Well, the one thing I will say about the Orville, and, and this is from someone who's been watching TV since 70s. The one thing about the Orville that I love and that basically a lot of shows have started missing, including current sci fi shows. The emotional, the, the human factor. I, I've said this before in prior uh, interviews. With, with the next generation, D Space Nine, they always made you feel like you were a part of the story. You felt emotionally attached to mm-hmm. these characters. Um, somewhere along the line in writing or something, after D Space Nine, it kind of lost its its flair. It kind of lo- where you were emotionally, it, it pulled at your strings, certain episodes. When the Orville came onto the scene, people automatically made up their assumption that, oh, it's Steph McFarlane. He's doing Family Guy. So we know it's yeah. going to be Family Guy. Family and, Guy in space. Even Fox yeah. fell for that when and they promoted like, it. 
Right, exactly. And then by episode two of season one, uh, or no, episode three about a girl, that changed the whole format and how people looked, and not just as Seth, but just the show itself. Mm-hmm. And it pulled at my emotional, it, it pulled at the strings. And yeah. I was invested. I, you know, right after that, I was totally invested. And then after that, I was, I was watching season one, two, three. Every season it pulls at your, your emotional strings in one capacity or another. But I find that other shows, and, and I don't try to compare other shows to other shows, but I watch and I'm, I'm watching certain current shows right now, mm. and it doesn't have that same effect on me. I'm talking mm. about sci-fi shows. It doesn't yeah. have the same effect where I'm like, okay, I want to get behind this character. I'm, 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 really, I'm really trying to understand this character, relate to the character, and I'm just sitting there like, uh, you had me there, but you didn't have me there, and everything. Where the Orville, the characters, you can relate to a lot of these characters because these are people, some people that you know, personalities, you know, and everything else. You're like, yeah, you know, and then you have a conversation after the show or after a similar episode, and you're talking about it because it's fresh in your head. You can't stop talking about it. A lot of sci fi shows, a lot of shows, period, don't have that effect. They just want to, yeah. like you said, they just want to get the product out, keep it moving. Get the product yeah. out. I watch a ton of stuff I don't remember anything about. Yeah. But anytime I watch the Orville, I'm thinking about it. And boy, do I think about the Orville because I've there, there hasn't been a day in the last seven years that I haven't watched something from the Orville, a clip or read something about the Orville. And I, I've seen scenes from these episodes mm-hmm. thousands of times at this point, and I still never get tired. And sometimes I see things I've never seen before. Yeah. But when I was talking to uh, Brandon Braga, who, of course, has had a lot to do with Star Trek, I asked him what the, the difference is between the Orville and Star Trek for him. And he says for him, it's, you know, the situations are similar to Star Trek, but it's people like you and I. That are in that are in the scenes, as opposed to these upper echelon people in in, in Star Trek, people mm-hmm. that are kind of just out of reach of our understanding. These are us. In, we are world. on the Orville. We are yeah. the Orville. Yeah. And, and we saw that when you know uh, JP, you and I were at the premiere for season three, mm-hmm. and you know at one point I I was chatting with with Seth, Brandon Fayette, and and myself. And I want to say somebody else was there, but just just to watch these these grown men who are about fifty years old, and just the absolute joy on their face, the the joy mm-hmm. on their face of of making this show and and what they get to accomplish. And you know, we were I was I was you know talking about the scene with um, you know where they did the shakedown of the Pterodon, you know, with yeah. with the four drones, and they were doing this basically in the space dock with people welding right behind them, and you know, all sorts of pew pews and explosions going on around them and i was like you can't do that man i know why you did it but like uh we're gonna give you a hard time about that on the show and he's yeah. like oh no way did we blow it and he called brandon over and and we had so much fun but that's the heart of the show man is that is that they are fans that just love this kind of stuff at heart whereas they do you know, other other franchises you know it might the, the decisions might not be be getting made by fans of that caliber of that yeah. level yeah they are just yeah. talk like talking to them uh, uh, they're talking like they're fans, like they're just like you, and they want to talk about the show just like you want to talk about the show. And I remember at the premiere, in, you know, uh, we had, we all had to get COVID tested to to go to the premiere. Once we landed, uh, we had to instantly get a COVID test, and then when you get there, you have to take another COVID test. And when I got there, um, I'm in that little holding area where it's, there's just people waiting for the results of their test before they can be let out into, into the party. So I'm standing there waiting for the results. And then Kit Stolen uh, walks, hey, JP. I'm like, oh, and then I was like, that's ah, Kit Stolen. So he comes over, we're chatting. And then Brandon Fay comes over, hey, JP. And so all of us are, 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 are there chatting. And then we start talking about the Orville. And then they start talking about behind the scenes stuff while I'm there, like I'm just part of the crew. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm I, you shouldn't be saying this stuff in front of me, but they didn't care. They're like, you're part of it. So, you know, I, I, I've gotten done with conversations where I'm like, do I need to sign an NDA for this? Or, yeah. or is there like, you know, I mean, so, I, so just like you, I'm like, okay, I'll keep this under wraps just, you yeah. know, as, as a courtesy. They never but, but yeah, they are, they are yeah. very open about it. It's, yeah. it's, it's so nice how they include the fans in, and they're so open, like in creating some of the things that I've created, um, like the recent, 
Shuttle Bay video that I, I released for the game, um, Kit Stolen actually consulted me on that. So he That's told awesome. me that the shuttle bay actually goes like this and it goes mm -hmm. down and then it goes into a conveyor belt into like a, a thing. And I was like sending him designs. I'm like, what do you think this looks like? And he's like, I, I changed that and that. Like they're so open with uh, the fans and like including oh. us. Yeah, so, and they wanted to put a scene in 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 season three of the shuttles being put down in yeah, uh, they, underneath the ground, but they like they didn't have any time to do it. Yeah. That wouldn't that wouldn't have messed up the 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 groove of an episode. But oh, they said there's a lot more ep there's a lot more shuttles and stuff on the ship than you would think. They're just under underneath. That's why there's that little uh, yes. uh, tape around. It's not really tape. It's just where the whole ground goes underground, uh, uh, under the floor, onto yeah. a conveyor belt. Well, I mean, for me, yeah, I mean, for me, when I've talked to uh, John Kassar and Eric uh, Eric Hayden and, and, of course, Tom, you know, giving me their input on what they thought and, and everything else, yeah, they love, like, even when doing uh, planetary stuff, they love what we're doing mm -hmm. because they see that we're paying homage. But I love getting their input, what they think. You know, there's been suggestions and everything behind the scenes. And I love it that the fact that they, they understand that, you know, hey, the fans really love what we're doing. And, and, you know, and I love the fact that the conversations and everything else you have, when you can say and talk with these individuals and you have long, not just five minute conversations, I'm talking about hours worth where you're losing track of time. You're like, oh, man, we've done the interview and we're still talking. And we're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're done the interview a lot. And we're just talking about everything. Orville related, sci-fi related. It's it's really great. I, I love the conversation and engagement that they do. Yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. And I do have uh, something to reveal uh, to you. Well, especially after reveal it to Mike, uh, when we were at the premiere, uh, when we were having that after party, which was such a great after party, uh, I was starting to get drunk. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed. But I noticed because they were just giving away the booze and rum and everything, and they kept bringing it to me, and uh, and I was starting to get lit, and so I had oh, to you're show us, leave. You're going to show us a clip of that of you getting lit. <laughs> I, I I took almost no pictures and no video while I was there. I uh, believe I was drinking Bear Fight whiskey provided by uh, Next Century Spirits. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I had a lot That's of rum, <laughs> and uh, so I, I was like, oh God, did I? Did I do anything embarrassing? Because I know I was, I, I was, I was starting to get not funny to me, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to think I'm not funny, so it's time to go. But uh, yeah, I just want, I just had to reveal that to you guys. I, I noticed nothing that would indicate you were anything but a uh, perfect, perfect uh, representative for the uh, for the fandom. <laughs> I'm a perfect for specimen the for the Orville fandom. Hey, there you go. else was lit, JP? They don't remember. <laughs> maybe. maybe. I, 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 but I remember. I finally let it go, but it was months of me thinking. I was like, what did I did, did I mess up or anything? And then eventually I let it go, and, and, and it turns out to be fine, but, but still. I'm pretty sure we all go through that after a good night of drinking where we're like, Thinking of everything we did wrong and all the things yeah. we said, yeah. But now I know better. <laughs> next time, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down because I hardly drink anymore, and so I definitely have to slow it down next time because I'm not used to it as much as I used to be. But uh, anyway, that's a whole other topic for another day. Don't drink too much, you guys. Just drink the right amount if you're gonna drink it all. Or just drink water. You know, you never go yeah. over water. <laughs> just drink water. <laughs> And um, what other th things do you guys want to see in a fourth season of the Orville? I'm I'm always coming up with ideas. I want to see sympathy for for the devil. Oh, sympathy for the devil! Absolutely. Yeah. If you guys haven't haven't listened to or read Sympathy for the Devil, which was the last episode from season three, uh, probably my favorite story uh, uh, of, of the Orvilles because the the moral quandaries of this story is exactly what I'm always looking for. But the link is in the description below. You can get it from Amazon. It, it's cheap, but you also get it for free. If you sign up for a, a an audible uh, free trial, you can pick two right. books, make that one of them. Yeah. I think it's, you know, I, I think it's 99 I, cents on ebook. Yeah. Yeah. Just pay the 99 cents. Yeah. If, if you're going to do the free trial, get some more expensive books. I mean, I wish they could have done it before, the end of season uh, three. I know originally it was supposed to be 
one of the like close to the end of the sea of season three. Mm. But yeah, man, and they had the budget. I mean, after reading, I'm like, oh yeah, they could have done it in the budget. And the way how they, you know, the story went, you're just sitting there, just like, wow. If, yeah. if only they could have. If it wasn't for COVID, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, because wow. that has to be filmed been. overseas, and they yeah. at that time you're, there was no travel allowed. Yeah. yeah, a so lot of those, a lot of those kind of east-west stories are are filmed in um, uh, Budapest or mm-hmm. that area um, that has sort of sort of elements of both, and that was kind of what they were looking at. They were scouting places in Czechoslovakia, uh, I think Croatia, Budapest, yeah. and, and that kind of thing. So, so that was not not a thing. The audiobook narrated by Bruce Boxleitner, I mean, narrated jams, so well by him. By yeah, way. he so impressed good. me. He did German so well, and he is he is amazing. We I got to interview him on the red carpet at the Saturn Awards, and he showed up very early. So we, we had we got to have an, a very nice long conversation, mm. and and then when we finished. Finished, he actually came back uh, to Jessica and, and me and said, can, can, can I talk to you about one other thing? <laughs> and and I said, yeah. And he was like, I heard you talking about like what a what a fan Seth is like, like of, of mine, you know, meaning Bruce Boxleitner mm-hmm. right? and, you know, things that he did with Tron and, you know, uh, uh, Babylon 5. He yeah. goes, but but he is such a he is such a sci-fi fan and such a Star Trek fan because I was there for Roddenberry Entertainment, mm-hmm. and he was like he just he has just always wanted to make this the right way, and it, again I mean comparing with just just how dark and gritty and and disjointed I think we all agree the first season of Discovery was mm-hmm. um, to have this you know relatively um definitely relatively but just just a, I, would, I would say extremely you know optimistic vision going forward you know that that we all are used to and that we all want from our sci-fi i can get dark gritty sci-fi anywhere someday yeah, i just yeah. want to know everything's going to be okay yeah um, right and and that's and that's where th- where this is from but but yeah bruce came back and talked to us about that and he my, my god what a what a, what an amazing I, I was so impressed with that with that guy yeah, he, he was great. And then uh, the Orville, the, the future that it portrays, I, I've said this many times, I don't see humanity ever reaching that point because humans are just are going to be in their own way mm-hmm. to get there. I think we're going to be more of an expanse type future. But the Orville shows us how we could be if we got out of our own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. And, actually, and, and I want to ask PJ a question. PJ, yeah. what's your favorite episode of the Orville? <laughs> wow, what's my favorite episode of the Orville? Um, um, it's too many to choose. How can you even choose? I, I gotta say, <laughs> I, I I really I really enjoy some of the more comedic episodes mm-hmm. um, because I don't feel like um, I don't feel like the comedy degrades the the quality of the sci fi at all. I think it's uh, such a good. They're so good at mixing it. Yeah, I think it's because they they try so hard to have the 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 human condition be portrayed. People are still people, and no matter what's going on in the world, people are always going to find a way to be funny. Um, I would, if I had to choose, I would say uh, maybe um, what was the episode where uh, where uh, the Mister Potato Head episode? Um, oh, Priya, uh, episode five. Priya. Yeah. Okay, Priya. Yeah. Yeah that that was that was a, a great episode. The correct answer, though. Is all of them? All of them. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, at least I had, the answer. I, I I jotted one down from one season, so I was kind of on the same track that you can't narrow it down to just one. It's tough because it, it, so many of the different episodes give us uh, uh, different things to love or different things to latch on, mm-hmm. latch on to, or to learn from. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're getting so many different lessons. There's a great lesson in. Uh, well, almost every episode, but yeah. uh, um, majority we, rule. You, yeah. you learn we, about. we got a comment that says my most favorite episodes were the were the egg salad sandwich from Starbase uh, Slarty Bartfast. Um, <laughs> Slarty and Slarty that would have been fast. twice in a lifetime and future unknown. Oh, yeah. yeah. The standout for me for season one, uh, about a girl. And then yeah. season two, tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, and yeah. season three, a tale of two topas. So I mean, mm-hmm. for standout, like you said, every episode is a great episode. Every one of them is my favorite, but the yeah. standout ones that I remember that I constantly can't stop talking about 
of those three particular episodes. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah, those are great. And, and no disagreement there. I mean, I would go with if the stars should appear. I think that is just the most, you know, the most Star Trek-like so so story. And I, I yes. really like it. Lasting impressions for season two, because that for me is just so deeply personal. I mean, that mm-hmm. just that just kind of like reached in and grabbed me by the heart and pulled it out. And mm. then, um, you know, I, I was I went back and forth. I actually wrote a tale of two and then Midnight Blue, and I've got them both written there. So I'll just yeah, Midnight Blue was so. so powerful. I cannot yeah. believe I, when it happened on screen when they were torturing Topa. I was like, yeah. I never expected to see that on this show. Right. Uh, the show's not afraid to to get down and dirty when it has to. Yeah. yeah. I feel like when I was watching season three, I was like, this is my new favorite episode. Then I watched the next one. I'm like, now this is my right. new favorite. Now I'm like, yeah. this one. So I ended up on the last one, I think is my my new favorite episode. The last episode of season three is my favorite. Oh yeah, Future Unknown. Because it gives us a resolution kind of that we can feel good about, mm-hmm. but we know there still can be more adventures yeah. coming up. Yeah. And there are gonna be more adventures with season four. And, coming and up David- to BD. And David Goodman told us that at the premiere, he was like, it was like the last, I was like, so cliffhanger at the end of season three. And mm-hmm. he was like, no, but you're going to be very satisfied yeah, with what you see. And I, and I think we were. And Bordas was I, hilarious in that. Trying to get the interior side of the All Walmart. Kidding aside, yeah. All like, kidding <laughs> he, being a best man was so good. Yeah. And I love that, um, that Gordon was uh, so jealous of Bordas yeah. trying to steal the spotlight. And then you think back and like, Bordas is trying to steal a spotlight. A hundred percent. Like, like he was like, will you be my best man? You know, yeah. Gordon. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And Bordas is like, no, I will be your best man. I mean, yeah. that's a, that's a Mocklin move, man. That's yeah. I never move. thought of, I never thought about that until Gordon said it. And I was like, yeah, you think about, uh, uh, Bordas doing, uh, karaoke in, in season one. Uh, what other things did he do? The party. Yeah, the bachelor party with the Elvis what? outfit. Yeah. Hooray! Yeah, hooray. That, that, is, that is my favorite gif to send people. The, the yeah. Biden saying hooray. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I still use that when when something good happens to somebody, especially if somebody in the Warville community. I was like, hooray, hooray for you, and and everybody gets it. Uh, J- JP, can I ask? Is it okay if I ask every all you guys a question? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I. Uh, I was, I, you know, usually with this group, this kind of group doesn't get together. You we're usually on with, with other people, right? Like, because most of us here are re- kind of reviewing the Orville as well. Mm-hmm. When you guys were watching season three, did it, did it feel like sometimes you were maybe, uh, were you just, so this is the question, were you guys kind of just enjoying the show or did you kind of get very analytical about it when you were watching it? Cause we review it too. No, I watch it. I watch it two ways. I watch it first, completely as a fan. I don't uh, try to analyze anything, and then I instantly, as soon as I'm done, I rewatch it again as a reviewer. Mm. Yeah, I, I was watching them pr- at least three times. You know, which is which was kind of recommended to me from from John Champion at Mission Log was first time j- just watch it as a fan. And usually, what I would do is I would. Um, I would get done recording with Jessica and we would usually kind of get together, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night on, on a, on a Wednesday, Thursday or something like that and get done recording. And then just to kind of like clear my brain, I would just go and watch the new one or the next one just as, just as a fan. And it was just kind of like a good way to kind of purge that. And then I would watch it again. And at that point I was watching it more to kind of like see, see if I could connect the dots, a plot, B plot, meanings, morals, messages, that kind of thing. And then I would really watch it at least a third time um, to write the recap. And sometimes there would even be more in there than that. But but the problem was, is that there was, it's kind of like a good script. You know, people say like a script is never finished. You just give up on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was the same kind of thing. Like every time I watched the show, there was another layer of the onion to peel back. And I just learned more and more and more. Um, one, one of the, I think the good examples of that is, is about a girl. And I think so many people in about a girl think, think of it as a, as a, an intersex or, or a trans story or, or, or a gender identity story. And I looked at that story as it is the Mocklins are, are surgically subjugating their females 
They're mm-hmm. doing they're doing it surgically just mm-hmm. the same way we do it culturally here. Mm-hmm. They quiet their they quiet the females. They don't give them a voice by making them men and yeah. giving them all of those masculine uh, qualities rather than listen to and have to deal with that female point of view. That's what I thought the episode was about. And that's what I argued on the show that it was about. Thing. Jessica felt the other way that it was that it was a a, a sexual identity, a gender identity question. Um, unless I did that fourth watch, I never would have picked up on that. Mm. Yeah, now that, that you mention it, I can I can see that it, it's more it's it's much more political um, or like social philosophy rather than identity a little bit yeah and and i think i think the the creative staff got somewhat skewered about that episode and how they portrayed you know intersex and and transgender kids um but i don't think that was their goal you know and i think their goal was to say this culture that they're alien they're not us it's okay we can talk about them right and that that, yeah. you know, that that very star trek tradition yeah. is is doing this thing that is abhorrent but guess what we do the same thing yeah. right here today like i remember in that episode during the trial where they had the humans say their side of uh, their view and then they had the mocklin say their view and the mocklin of course i agree with the humans and then, but the Mocklins were giving their view, and I'm like, oh, I can kind of see where you're coming from. I disagree with you, but I kind of see where you're coming from. So the show doesn't even give us an answer; it just asks questions and lets uh, lets us, the viewers, come up with uh, the answers on our own. It makes us think, which yeah. a lot of people uh, they don't want to think about things; they just want to be given the answer or some answer, whether it's the right answer or not. And uh, that's another thing I just really appreciate that, about the show. I do want to give a shout out to a comment I see here from Jonathan Earl. Mortality Paradox is my favorite episode from season three. I got to clap for that because Mortality Paradox is also one of my favorite episodes. And um, it's uh, it's not beloved, uh, at least not at the time, not beloved by the uh, by the fandom as much as the other episodes. A lot of people were not feeling that episode. I absolutely loved it. That was a Twilight Zone episode to me. Uh, anytime they do anything that's kind of reminds me of the Twilight Zone, I'm all about it. So I really appreciated that episode, and I'm glad that you did too. What do you guys think about Mortality Paradox, where they're they're on this planet and which weird stuff's happening, and they're all being faced with uh, confronted with death, possible death. I I, I, mean, I thought it was. It was Oh, oh no! Go ahead, Eric. I was well, no, I, went no, long, I went on a long diatribe a minute ago. Mike. Your turn. <laughs> no, 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 I'm giving you insight, Mike, because I'm, I'm sitting there just listening to Mike. Like, wow, Mike got some good points. I'm like, yeah, I'm about that. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll jump in in a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, just just simply said, you know, the, the the very question at the end of nobody knows what it's like after we die. All right, people have near death experiences, but that's exactly what they are. They're near death. They're yeah. Dead death like you can't um, picture it because yeah, the picture so, nothingness you, you can't picture you, nothingness. then you're still there to picture nothingness. yeah and you know that that last line of you know where i think it was kelly that asked ed you know you want to live forever don't you and he said yeah because i want to see what happens yeah right like, like i would love to see what happens i'm not going to get to but that's okay the only thing we can do right now is do what we can to 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 get a little bit of yardage to you know to 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 move us in the right direction and if we can just do that just a tiny little bit in what little time we have then then that's you know that's that's a life well lived i think maybe in season nine ed will become one of the multifacic people that have immortality it's it's interesting because in philosophy this question is often discussed about like if there was a possibility to live forever is that something we should aim for and i personally think that we shouldn't aim for that i don't think it would be a good thing because you'd have to get to the point where you become over it and then have to commit suicide or something Mm -hmm. um and you don't want to get to the point where you're kind of over it or you're like just bored with it uh i think that the beauty in life comes from its um its, it's finite it's, nature f- yeah finite nature exactly it's special because it's not forever and i think that's what makes it special so i don't yeah. think we should even aim for immortality well even like because you know my brain's always thinking about something that's intangible but i was thinking if we ever got the technology to where we can live forever 
it's not going to be given to everybody. It'll just be the, 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 the small few that shouldn't be living forever in the first place. It, it, would, it would be monetized. Sure. I mean, my philosophy on it is like from shows like Highlander and, and other shows I've watched, like Sandman, they, they touched on that a little bit on Sandman, one of the uh, episodes of Sandman. I, for me, it's a matter of, okay, they showed how this person lived through the course of history and how they changed. They had a family at one point in one lifetime, another lifetime. They, they, they were living, doing this and, and they, you know, and Sandman would come back and visit him. He's like, well, you know, what do you, you know, do you feel like you want to end your life? And he's like, no, he's like, I still want to see how it's going, like you said, how it's going to end for me. It's like, okay, could I see myself doing that? Could I say goodbye to this life? Could I say goodbye to all these people I've lost? How well can I handle the loss of a loved one? And then you have to ask yourself, how devastated would you be in knowing that you, everyone that you cared about, everyone that you knew was gone. And yeah. so that's something I, I always, my father, I, I use this, my, my father always, oh yeah, kid, I'm not going to be here much longer. And we're like, yeah, dad, you're not going nowhere. So when he, when he passed on, we were like, okay, we knew he, he kind of prepared us, you mm -hmm. know, before, you know, because he lost, he had no more friends. All of his friends were gone. He was much, he was up there in age. All his friends were gone. His siblings were gone. He was just like, okay, I'm ready to go. And so how would I feel the same way? It's hard to say. It hard, you know, when I look at the world sometimes, and, and so when you're looking at these shows, when you're looking at these episodes of, of Orville, when you have to sit back afterwards and, make, and it makes you think, it makes you try to figure out things, whether it's about mortality, whether it's about, you know, a person that, you know, is making a choice that's going to affect the rest of their life. Like, all these little thoughts and, 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 and stories, when they have the ability to make you think, to conversate, to have deep thoughts and, and, and philosophizing afterwards, that is, and I go back, that is great writing. Mm -hmm. To make you, to pull you in and to make you think, to make you talk about it years later and you're still talking about key episodes and that how it affected us emotionally, physically, mentally. It, mm -hmm. it, basically, that goes back to incredible great writing. You know, yeah, so absolutely. one of the strong reasons why I love the series so much with the Orville. Well, what's our opinion? Because the, the fans like talking about this. What's our opinion on whether or not a Lars should come back? Halston Sage. Hey, look, you, you guys I, up for that? All, all the boys want her. Yeah. <laughs> all the boys will be like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to have her back. I'd, it was great to have her in that couple of cameos, the, mm -hmm. the Road Not Taken, as well as uh, Future Unknown. It was great, great to have them back there. They'd have to do some serious, uh, maybe maybe it's just as simple as, you know, getting her the right medications so she can handle the, you know, the the, the lighter gravity. Mm -hmm. um, but she's she's amazing to ha come back. I, don't, I haven't heard anything about Jessica Zor coming back or not coming back mm -hmm. for season four. I imagine she would. She would. Uh, be happy to come back, and I think she does does a great job. But I think I think Alara, at this point, coming back for the right reasons, uh, would be would be welcomed by everybody, male and oh, yeah. female, and yeah. non and you know various you know mm -hmm. uh, non binary genders alike. Yeah. I'd be happy as long as we got Robert Picardo back. <laughs> Ildis, God, yeah. Ildis was the worst. Well, until the last five minutes of Home, then he was okay. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was so impressed with that scene. I still am. I'm like, wow, look at the, you can just feel the regret. Uh, uh, Robert was giving. He, he was doing good acting that day. Uh, you can just feel the regret of the character for the way he's been treating his daughter. A hundred percent. And it was done so well. We had Robert Picardo and John Billingsley on just kind of a very small, uh, intimate panel on the Roddenberry interactive stage at STLV mm -hmm. in 22. And he, he said his words, not mine, that the Orville is doing science fiction better than any other franchise that's making science fiction today. And he said that that's how I feel. slowly. So everybody could hear it at, you know the convention in las vegas dedicated to the other franchise so like what a dark Robert turn Picardo. all of a sudden like what a, what a dark turn all of a sudden with, with that pot scene right yeah, yeah. john billingsley yes. won that <laughs> yes. ball, or try is it try Travol sauce Travol sauce yeah yeah 
uh, and then I was like, you know, uh, use your hand. So he's like using a ladle. He's like, oh, I don't want, you know, that ladle's dirty. He's like, no, it's not. It's perfectly. It's like, why don't you use your hand? Right then, I was like, what? Was, use your hand. And I was like, oh, this just got dark. And I did not expect that, especially if we're not John, not from John Billingsley. I was still thinking of Dr. Phlox the whole time. But yeah, it was just such a great scene. Uh, people don't talk about it enough. There's so many things from the Orville that we have t- talked about, but we should still be talking about because it, <laughs> it just stays with you. At least it stays with me. And yeah, it's like, like this from Trek. I mean, come on, in the same in the same role. I mean, in the same scene together, and you're mm-hmm. like, wait to see what's going to happen between them. And like you said, when it took that dark turn, I was sitting there like, holy crap! Yeah, like, right. <laughs> you know, like what? <laughs> this just became a thriller. Yeah, it did. And and for anybody, and I know we're probably preaching to the choir with this crowd, but for anybody who's just given the show a watch, um, it's again, it's it's the 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 multitude of layers in these episodes that the more you peel back, the more you can see how well uh woven uh, between the music and the scenes and the A plot mm-hmm. and the B plot and just just how it is just this this really fabulously orchestrated uh, event, you know, week after week or episode after episode after episode. It's just, and the more I watch it, the more I see, and the more I, the more of those nuances I pick up on. It's just, it's 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 amazing. Yeah. When it comes to season four, I'm very interested to see what. Uh, big cameos that we get because you know we've had some pretty decent cameos in the Orville. Uh, um, uh, Charlize Theron, uh, Liam Neeson, Bruce Willis, uh, and more. Uh, but when I was talking to Rena Owen, who plays Havina on the show, mm-hmm. she was saying because she, she loves the show, she says season three is so good when people see it, when actors see it. They're going to want to be on season four because it's good work and actors, all actors want to do good work on a good show. So she's said she's expecting lots of big name actors to want to be in, in the next season. Yeah. Maybe we'll get Dolly Parton again. That, yeah, that nice. was amazing um, yeah. to see that. And, and the fact that that was kept under wraps. Um, yeah, did, 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 anybody ha- did anybody have a clue that that was, gonna happen i didn't i used to i used to be able to predict a lot of stuff in in the first two seasons season three they kept it so close to the vest i was surprised at every single episode and i had no idea of of dolly parton showing up saturday before that episode dropped uh jessica and i had drinks with seth and he was like I'm trying to like not get your show banned. Um, <laughs> but he was like, forget it. Forget it. That's a good way to put it. Um, you know, we've kept it a secret for a year and a half. I'm going to keep it a secret for four more days. And there you just, go. just make sure you watch Wednesday night. So yeah. I think it dropped nine o'clock Pacific, midnight Eastern. Uh, I watched it as soon as it dropped. And like an hour and a half later, I got a text. So what did you think? Um, wow, it was, the, it was nice. the Dolly episode. And yeah. I was like, yeah, man, that was legit. I'm that sure he really was super was. excited about that. Maybe in season four, we'll get Beyonce. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, seeing the fact on Family Guy, he gets anyone and anyone to, when he had the whole entire cast of track, uh, Next Generation on and, and everything else. So with Seth, I, I, I can definitely guarantee that he's going to get some top tier actors. To show up, that you know, Anthony Hopkins. Don't be surprised. You get Anthony Hopkins on mm-hmm. there making a, and you're like, wait a second, was that? Yeah, that was that was him. You know, <laughs> Imagine when, Snoop, Dogg. Snoop Dogg would be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, Snoop Dogg. What would Snoop Dogg play? He would, he would go would to be... the synthesizer and like get you know get me a joint. You know. Yeah, right. I, I <laughs> want to see Snoop anymore. Dogg play one of uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Dan's rate uh, race of character with that big that stupid good. head. Yeah, <laughs> I do remember uh, in one of the f- first couple episodes of the of the Orville season one when I just was trying to figure out how to cover this show because I never covered any show before, and I was like, I guess this is the thing I'm doing. I started realizing how crappy the internet is when it comes to information, which is which is why I don't give out a lot of information uh, anymore like I used to until I am sure something is true. But I remember, and I did a video about this, about Patrick Stewart 
being a guest on uh, on one of the episodes of the Orville because IMDb put it in their trivia or in their news about the Orville section. So I'm like, oh, wow. and then I realized, oh, you know, after the season was done, I'm like, oh, IMDb is a known website that's supposed to be trusted, but they have no idea either. And then I started realizing there's a lot of stuff on the internet from trusted websites that are just all a bunch of junk. So then I, that's one of the reasons I started changing my approach to the things that I would report about the Orville. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just real quickly, we talked about Billingsley and Picardo. We had Molly Hagan as, as Alara Catan's mom. Um, mm-hmm. We had Tim Russ. We had Frakes direct. We had, um, uh, Robert Duncan McNeil, McNeil direct an episode. We've already got so many creatives, you know, behind the camera. Um, and uh, other than those two that are, that are part of the weekend and week out cast, um, the 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 big alien in Into the Fold, I forget his name. Uh, he mm-hmm. was a Star Trek alum. He'd played a Klingon yeah. at some point. Uh, just just so many. So I, I think we would, you know, definitely. You know, it seems like that has sort of diverged, though, in season three. I don't think we got as many, you know, we didn't get, you know, Jonathan Frakes in season three. I think part of that was COVID related. It was just well, actually, I found, Seth. Yeah, it was just those two. They um, probably because the COVID thing was tough, but also I think they wanted just to not have to uh, not have to update a director on, on the history of the show every single time. They wanted to keep one voice for the and season. And they, they're also like kind of both directing multiple episodes at the same time, which is very yeah. complex to, to to bring somebody somebody in on. Um, but but yeah, so I mean, just I, I think I think more cameos maybe along those lines, you know, are, are a possibility, um, as well as you know Seth's you know, his posse, man, like he's, he's got his people that he works with. Like mm-hmm. you, know, you mentioned, uh, you know, Charlize and, uh, Liam Neeson, um, you know, they'll for sure be back. Yeah. And uh, he's working with Liam Neeson again in the, uh, the reboot for naked gun. Yeah. But who's going to play Nordberg? That's my, that's my big question. Yeah. That's going to be, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, Jay Lee, let's get Jay Lee in there. <laughs> I want to throw out a prediction. Peter, right? Peter, Peter would be funny too. Oh, uh, Peter point. is funny. That guy is funny. <laughs> I was gonna, I was just gonna throw out a prediction for for a cameo. I can imagine uh, them on the uh, simulator deck, and they're like they're in a bar scene, and when they're 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 gonna leave the simulator, there's there's music, uh, there's there's Billy Joel music going on in the background, and they they uh, they pass the guy at the piano and they to tip him. And it's Billy Joel sitting there playing the piano. That would be awesome. That, you know what? We think alike. I, I typed that into the chat a while back about uh, a Billy Joel cameo would be great. Of course, maybe if he had a little, uh, j- just a little bit of alien makeup on, but you still could definitely tell who he was. <laughs> yeah, they totally like, do yeah. that on the show too. I mean, the aliens from uh, from the Jilliac planet, uh, uh, they just had a little bit of makeup on uh, around their eyes, and otherwise they looked human. You know, I, I could also see Mark Hamill making a cameo. I could see Mark That'd Hamill. Be great. Making a cameo. Yeah, that, that would be great. I'd love to have uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg because they're friends. So yeah, that's good. For, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or well, actually, uh, who's uh, I really, really wanted? Uh, he works with. Um, oh, what's the bad guy from the, the Ted films? Uh, Giovanni Giovanni Rabisi. Giovanni I Rabisi. think he would be gr- a great character on the Orville. He was on uh, Million Ways to Die in the West as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. exactly. He would be amazing. Oh yeah, so, uh, he, yeah. So that opens up Neil ahead. Patrick Harris and yep. and Neil Patrick Harris and other folks too. As long as we get Patrick Stewart, or at least um, Ian McKellen. <laughs> Ian McKellen, yeah. So. Um, are we going to speak about Kelly a little bit? Oh, that that did cross my mind. I forgot to, <laughs> I got off track. Um, so you mentioned that Adrian Palicki, uh, when at, directly asked at, at that convention by a fan, uh, if she's going to come back to the next season, she said, no one's called me yet. That leads me to believe that if they did call her, that she would say yes. Because she never said she wouldn't return. She just said, oh, it's something some people might want to do. But she never full out said, I'm not going to return. Because I'm On like. On the interview she did. On that interview, she's like, I'm not doing that. No, she said, well, she said, she's we're not, not doing, doing it right anymore. now. Yeah, yeah they, they, said, they weren't doing, doing it right then. Anymore. 
Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah, can I watch I, it like I, three I, times? I'm like, what did she say? Yeah, it yeah. sounded like I, she's I, like, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. yeah, no, she yeah. said, we're not doing that anymore. And then she said, there's some talk about doing something, but yeah, I think she if said, some really people are talking about doing it again. Yeah. I think if you're a working actor and, and you don't have anything currently that pays more, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, it wouldn't cost you money to do it. Um, then you, I mean, you're, you're going to say yes, I would think. Yeah. And, the, and the, it's cause she loves the show. She loves the people and the production. But she's legitimately mad it's taken so long because she's an actor who wants to work. The thing is, it's not very easy for actors to get work. There are a lot of actors out there. And um, it, even when they do get work, it's just a day or two or maybe a week. But to get a full year of nonstop filming work, it's almost impossible to do nowadays. So when they come, come up to her saying, hey, uh, you don't have anything bigger going on right now. Uh, you want to work for an entire year nonstop? She's going to say yes, I would think. How yeah. about JP as a cameo in season four? Oh, I'm, about it. I'm not, uh, I'm not doing do that. I think, do I think, I think, yeah, I think you can right, do that. <laughs> No, I'm just trying to get a job on set, uh, handing out copies. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. I think five will get you 10. We'll see JP on camera. I think, I think yeah. if it wasn't for COVID, I think Jay, you would have saw JP doing a walk on. Yeah. Well, if anything, my what I would love to do is get paid to promote the Orville because I, if if I, if I could afford the time, I would nonstop just create Orville stuff to get people to watch the show. And then I'll walk in with those copies someday. That'd be nice. <laughs> That'd be cool. So. Uh, did we talk about at least did we talk about uh the progress of the the next orville game is it coming up soon or has it got a ways to go um it's got a little ways to go because i'm kind of like a solo dev i um, get it yeah so i finished all of the modeling and i'm just putting it all into unity and now i'm starting the uh tedious coding stage mm -hmm. um which is fun but kind of like really hellish because yeah you get one little thing wrong and it just stuffs the whole code up so yeah and then you gotta figure out where it's at and find it and all that stuff yeah um but it's fun when it goes right so we're just uh i'm just putting it into unity just getting it all together so as we still got a little ways to go but if anyone is um competent in uh c sharp coding unity let me know and love to have some help that would be amazing um, I do have the, uh, cause you're with Phoenix development, right? Yes. I do have the Phoenix development, um, uh, uh, link to tw Twitter link in the description of this video. Mm -hmm. And if you have any other links, you can send them to me at least, and I'll, I'll, I'll update the notes. Thank you. Thanks JP. Uh, Barry's asking, where is the Orville game and what format? Uh, which one? The 2d one? You can find the 2d one on itch.io. It's for free. You can download it. Uh, you can download it for PC and Mac. And the yeah, I got my. Well, I think I might have got a link from from one of you guys or on your website, or I might have gotten off Steam. I, no, I don't think Steam. I got. No, yeah, I, it's not a Steam. Yeah, <laughs> or an itch.io. So I can send you that link too. I can put it in chat if anyone. Oh, wants cool. To know well, that. Oh, I was just getting ready to do the same thing, Elise. Um. There's actually like another three Orville games on itch.io that other fans have made. And they're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. Like there's an Orville ar arcade game, Orville space shooter game. Yeah, I've definitely played a space shooter game uh, a few years ago, I think. They're pretty cute. Pretty cool. I got it in the chat, Elise. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, you guys gotta you guys gotta play that game. It is it's 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 fun, but it's cute, but it's also a great story. It's an expansion upon the Orville canon, and uh, it's got some great little uh, cameos in it from uh, from people that work on the Orville. Yeah, mm -hmm. speaking of that, Elise, uh, the characters you generated, the NPCs, like myself and everybody else on the screen, have mm -hmm. worked their way. Most of them have worked their way into the Orville wiki. Uh, with a description there, so we're we're uh, we're officially oh, canon now. Nice, yeah. <laughs> awesome. You're part of the universe now, <laughs> and that's that's a great feeling to know that we're, we're part of the universe, Orville universe. Oh, speaking of which, is everyone going to be pre-ordering that uh, Orville uh, 
the Orville set that's coming out later this year. It's, oh, the it's, guide to the Orville. Yes, yes. By by Andre, Andre, Andre Manis. Manis. That's right. And this 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 book, it's not just some book. It's a special to do, a special stuff. It's got a, a big fold out schematic of the ship. Um, Does it, it just pop looks up? really nice. Yeah, it, like little pop up <laughs> schematics. And, but it also has four badges of uh, disciplines, you know, medical, command, uh, engineering, and um, security badges uh, that come with it. And I believe there's a link in the description of this video if you want to order it. But it's available for pre order right now, and it comes out on September 24th. And one other reason they're doing it is to help promote the next season of the Orville. So you're going to want to help help support the Orville, get this awesome collector's item. Yeah, and we'll have Andre back on Mission Log of the Orville for a supplemental closer to the release date of uh, of that book. So I want to get you everyone's take. What do you think that, more likely, because this is something that fans have asked about, what do you think that they eventually will put the Orville seasons one to three on 4K or at least 1080p like Blu-ray or 4K? Uh, I have I haven't heard any word of when it's coming out, but I know it's eventually going to come out. 4K, I guess they would have to upscale the first two seasons and do some. Now the so season three, I believe, was filmed in 8K and then remastered in, or mastered in 1080p. So I don't know if they already have some, you know, a version of it waiting for 4K or if they're going to have to upscale it or take that original. Um, the original 8K version and bring it down to 4K. But of course they're eventually going to have to do that because it'll sell and, and, and studios want to sell things to you guys. And, and this is a question for, for those of you that may be more familiar with the, the current state of affairs with studios and streaming. Um, I would think that if I'm a streamer that also owns a studio that also owns the content, that maybe I don't want to sell the physical media that I want to sort of keep want that behind to... a paywall. Is that, is that the truth or is that, or, or is it still the fact that folks want to sell the physical media because it's a moneymaker? Well, they might want to wait until the views get down below a certain level and they're like, okay, we'll put it out and then we can make some more money. Uh, but yeah, I, even the, the, um, season three soundtrack, I believe is only available digitally. Hmm. Or at least it was at one point. I haven't looked it up, looked it up recently, but at one point it was only available digitally. You, you couldn't get a physical copy. So yeah, and uh, it has something like thirty hours of 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 music. I don't think it's that long, but it's it's, it's really long. Really, believe, it's really long. Yeah, there's it's like the length of two two or three CDs, but without the CDs, <laughs> just right. the song numbers. But there's a lot of songs in there. But there's you know they have a lot of songs on it that are. A minute or two because they're just meant for a certain scene mm -hmm. uh but yeah i've Amazing listened to it. it's been a while but yeah. every episode yeah, originally scored and uh and played by a full orchestra mm -hmm. um, and we all know the names andrew Cotty, uh etc that we've had on the show uh mm -hmm. joel was, we had as a as a as a guest yeah I, i'm blanking i know all the names but kevin, i'm blanking i know there was a kevin in there and he was mm -hmm. uh he did some work kevin on Star Tusca. Trek. yeah yeah yeah, amazing scores. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Bruce Bot uh, Botton, I think. Uh, yeah, wrote the theme. He's the yeah, guy. yeah. And he won an Emmy for stuff. for was it Sequest DSV? Well, he deserved it. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Something on that show deserved an award. Dang it! Okay, here's a question. Right. There is uh, from Angel Troncaso. I Casso, I got a question. How can I buy merch from the Orville? The way to right now to get official Orville merch is uh, from the Hulu store, hulu.com slash store, something like that. You'll see a, an Orville section. They got shirts, books, shot glasses, hats, things like that. And then there's lots of other merch. I have a ton of Orville merch that I've created, Orville-esque merch. You can get Seth Trek hat, shirts, all that stuff that's in the links below. Uh, but the official stuff is uh, on, on the Hulu store. But also don't forget to check out 
like Amazon, a couple other websites. You get the Orville comics. The comic books are incredible. There might be links in the description. Uh, the links change all the time, so I, I have a hard time uh -huh. keeping track of them. But the Orville comics are great. Um, you can buy uh, the first two seasons were on DVD. You can get that. There's uh, yeah, the Hero Clicks. Uh, Hero Clicks. Yep. Mess, yeah, Master yeah. Master Replicas also. JP, did you create the Seth Trek design with the the Planetary Union logo inside the the Delta? Oh, oh yeah, I, ha I have that T-shirt. I almost wore it today. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm the Seth I Trek love guy. That yeah, shirt. I bought it off of uh, T Public. Yeah, yeah, I used to be on there. Hey, there you go. That was the uh, that was. I, I don't know. I have like four or five different Seth Treks, but there's the main one, and then um, on my YouTube on this channel, there's a. Uh, products that are on a whole separate store that i have the gold edition seth trek uh jalo jalon and prosper uh <laughs> made it made in the style of the tng logo with, where they have the rainbow yeah, that's great the, the rainbow warp <laughs> lines coming out of the back of the engine but it's all the colors of the different disciplines from the orville uh but that, you know there's that stuff and sometimes i'll see people that ha are wearing my merch and they don't even know that because yeah. they they got some of my merch from one place and then they had some other merch that was in another place and they don't know that i also made that as well and i'm like oh i'm glad you're wearing supporting the word well getting people to ask about it there's a pretty cool it's it's right around a thousand pieces um knockoff lego set available on amazon uh, oh. of, of the Orville of the ship. Uh, no oh, way. I did not know that. That yeah, is that great. Where? In, fact, in fact, let me go off camera real quick and I'll grab it. Yes. That is cool because there are some amazing replicas from Master Replicas of, of not only the Orville, but also the shuttle pods and also the uh, Kalon uh, uh, interceptors and the yeah. Krill ships. They got all kinds of cool, cool stuff that it's yeah. screen accurate, made of metal, a little bit heavy. Uh, totally worth it. I wish I had that stuff. I just can't buy stuff anymore because it costs money. YouTube, to <laughs> demonetizing people. Uh, all my money goes to, to the internet bill. <laughs> so this is uh, this is it, and it. Uh, let me, no let me way! Get rid of my oh, you have it. That looks there. great. Yeah. I, I have to so have it. Nice. it is, that's that's yeah, that's pretty good. I show. have that's seen right? a picture of that. I've seen yeah. a picture of that. I just didn't relate that it was for sale. Yeah, so there I got one on Amazon. I think they're available on Timu, which I've just recently started buying stuff on, which oh, wow. is uh kind of uh a foreign uh version of Amazon. And it's uh but you know, I mean I didn't uh end up getting my checking account emptied and the stuff showed up on time. So nice. I, and I, that's I, I feel good about it. Have there to you link go. it please. Yeah, and that's okay, a, I will. that's I'll officially right that's officially from Lego. Someone made no. it. It's right here. It's, it's a Chinese book. company called Brick Block. Yeah. Uh -huh. Brick Block. <laughs> it's not on Amazon. That is the coolest awesome. thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be looking, I'll, I'll be promoting that because I know people are gonna want that. So I'll be promoting that when, when I'm done with the stream. I'll go on. I usually just promote everything on Twitter and in the community section of YouTube. I don't mess with all the other uh, social media sites. I have them all, but I don't mess with them because it's just too many different things. So I'm like, I'll stick to one or two locations. Mike, did you have to build it? Does it come with instructions? Are oh, you muted? You're muted. It does. It comes with instructions that are that are pictorial only, okay. um, and it, it's really funny because it's it's Chinese translated into English. Um, so the the instructions come in a PDF download, and like the very first page says, like, "Thank you, Earth Warriors, for saving our planet." Uh, by printing out this PDF, we are able to save like. 3.2 like gigawatts of trees <laughs> of tree yeah. power earth warriors. and yeah so i was like yeah heck yeah man i'm an earth warrior let's <laughs> let's do this thing um That's yeah so, so you, you have to put it together it took me it took me probably a weekend of you oh, know at, at some point where tiffany was uh uh was away um that i grabbed it but i'm, I'm getting a link for it right now uh, which it, I, just, I just texted it to uh jp uh, just oh, okay great and I, yeah and i'm putting it up right now yeah, yep. but it, it was a fun little project, and uh, you know all the pieces were there, and um, yeah, it was. Uh, I think a little a little piece of the directions were 
were incomplete, but because it's a symmetrical model, I just kind of like skipped ahead to the other side and, you know, kind of, kind of reversed that, but that was the only, so cool. the only challenge. It was fun. It reminds me of, cause like what I do is all voxels, so it's all blocks. Yeah. So I've created the ship so many times as oh, it's blocks. So to physically create it with blocks is cool. Yeah, I'll yeah. put the shorter, I'll put the shorter link in there. But it's a good, I don't know, 18 inches long or so, I'd say. Maybe maybe a little bit shorter than that. We'll call it the Lego ish or Orville. We all lie when it comes about when it you know comes about <laughs> when we're talking about size. <laughs> there we go. Nice and clean. Ready update. Boom. There it is. Thank you. Yeah, so it's all about promoting the Orville. That that is my main goal for however long it needs to be done, which as long as there's an Orville, it needs to be done. Even even when the show finishes after 10 or 11 seasons, uh, I'll have to promote previous seasons. So this is this is going to be a lifelong pursuit for me. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, and, and well, Master Replicas. Go ahead, Eric. I'm sorry. No, no, I said it goes without saying. It, it, for me, it's, it's something that's in my DNA now. So I really... Like you said, living, talking, getting hats made and T-shirts and coming up with all crazy ideas like and how uh, bringing the fandom together and stuff. Well, let, let me let me tell you this, because I think this I think you directly impacted this like 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 by yourself. Um, when we did the Orville panel last year at Star Trek Las Vegas, um, we also had a, you know, periodically there would be a cosplay meetup for different themes. Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Next Gen, the original series. Uh, for the first time at STLV, there was there was an Orville cosplay meetup at the Roddenberry uh, interactive stage. And there were plenty of people there, you know, yeah. in costumes of all the disciplines looking good. Mm -hmm. And I think that came from directly from, you know, your efforts and creating costumes, you know, for the planetary union series. So good for you on that. Cause that's given people a chance to cosplay that wouldn't have a chance to yeah. otherwise. Yeah. And bust out your sewing machines. That might be a good business right there. <laughs> Well, like I said, and also it has it has to do with a oh, this way with a great wait. What am I this way? Yeah, with a great cast. Oh, well, wait, wait, it's this way, this way, this way. You know, with a great cast. Like I said, the I couldn't have done it without the cast and behind the scenes from Jason Griffin to Brian Terranova, Brian Lessig, and and J, uh, Jim Panetta. So again, again, I have a great crew. I have a great crew. So I believe me. It's a, it, and like JP said earlier. It's a lot of work. People think that it's easy to make a fan film. You can make a basic fan film, and I've done lots of different fan films from Judge Dredd and all to 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 like like Batman and everything else. So doing this was a major labor labor of love. Like I did Trek, and I said, okay, I haven't done Star Wars yet, but I was like, Orville's got to be. No one has done it, and I'm like, I want to be that one to really put it out there, to really get it out there, but also giving embers of what the Orville is about, not just doing it just for, just for, the, you know, just to get clicks or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put together good stories. And, and I mean, we would, we would have conversations on the writing and how the direction of the characters and developing characters, my character and, and the stuff he's going to do and mirror it with a little bit of real life, like events and things that have occurred with me and stuff. And those last couple of episodes we did, we, we pulled out a lot of emotion in it and also what you see in the episode is really coming from a, a really deep place. So yeah. Yeah. And there's, more, there's so much more to come. That's amazing. And if anybody thinks it's easy to, to, to create a production of, of any kind, I mean, you know, what we do, with, you know, with the podcast and the webcast mm -hmm. and streaming and, you know, even just doing your best to get the lighting and the, the background right. I mean, like that for me is a stretch, let alone, yeah. you know, sets and blocking and scenes and what you're going to do with the cameras and multicam and how many so shots you need to film and, and how you put your shots together. So you, you get everything you need done on a certain set before you tear it down and build a new one i mean it is incredibly complex incredibly mm -hmm. complex but you know what the killer is the killer is is when you're done everything like you said you start breaking down and then you realize i we forgot to film a certain key moment and you're like oh my god mm -hmm. so now you have to bring back certain per and you have to try to work around their schedules and try mm -hmm. to make it work i think the one time i had the entire this was one of those moments right here in the, in the picture i had i had everyone because everyone was coming from different different parts of the united states 
and I have everyone there. So I was like, photographers, we're like, we're getting as many pictures, we're shooting videos, we're trying to do as much as we can for that little bit of time. And we were, and again, there were still things missing. I'm like, okay, we're going to do this again. We're going to get everyone back together. So it is, like you said, it is, it can be tedious, but because you want to put out good quality. And then, you, you know, we're not even talking about post-production. We're just talking about just the filming part of it. The post-production, whole nother thing. The ADR especially. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. ADR. <laughs> Woo. You have, especially when doing that puppet episode, that puppet episode, that, mm -hmm. and that was my tribute to Jim Henson and everything, and I knew how much Seth loved stuff with puppets, and I was like, I want to I want to do this episode before Seth comes up, because I said, I know Seth's going to come up with an idea to do a, a puppet episode. I'm like, I got to do the puppet episode before yeah, he comes puppets, up. Yeah, puppets, super marionation. Um, you know, what if there was an Orville animated series? That's something you guys would get behind? I think it'd be oh, fast. Oh, heck yes. It's got to be <laughs> Hanna-Barbera style. Yes. Oh, you think Hanna-Barbera, not, not Family Guy style? Uh, well, when I think of animated sci-fi, I think of uh, the, S the Star Trek animated series, which to me looked very Hanna Barbera. But fa Family Guy style it might be a little too on the nose. But I mean, of course, I'd watch it. It's going to be it, it'll be done well. But see, but I, they do I mean, marionettes. That see, I grew up in the era when Captain Scarlet and, and came mm -hmm. out. And all, so if they did something like I think that, or or like uh, what is it? Um, they did they did that spoof. Uh, Trey Parker and them did the spoof. Team uh, America. Uh, Team America, where you're doing an Orville episode where they're all like something out of Team America or Captain Scarlet. That yeah. would be funny in, in itself, just to see that and hear all their voice. What are you talking about, Lamar, getting into it? Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and they've got some expertise because Frakes directed Thunderbirds, so they can have oh, him do oh, the, do the, the yeah. Marionation episode. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see that and all. In fact, like even when we did the episode, I had someone who worked with uh, Jim Henson's uh, productions. Uh, the person who designed my puppet, he worked with Jim Henson's people and everything. So I was like, oh yeah, that's, and so he was giving me, you know, if, you know, he was giving me like instruction on, yeah, this is the proper puppet etiquette and stuff. So, oh my wow. god, you know. So eventually, I do want to go back and revisit that whole thing, and especially with Puppetary Union. But yeah, I, I again, I come from the same era. Where Seth, you know, and especially when he was doing Cartoon Network stuff, and also, I, like I said, mm -hmm. I'm an avid fan of. I knew all the stuff he had to go through when he did his short fan film when he was a kid or a teenager when he was doing whole Star Trek stuff. So I, I totally could relate. So I, I think that's one of the reasons why I was like, okay, I, I really want to put out something good, but paying homage to all the stuff that he's done and I grew up on, and he can, it's relatable, especially for our generation. The 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 Gen Xers and all, it's relatable because they're like, ah, I, I see what you're doing. The Captain America meme. I, I understood that reference. Yes. <laughs> we got uh, Tom Costantino in the chat yeah. saying, sorry, you can't stay. Just wanted to say thanks for doing this. Oh, Tom, thank you so much. I'll, I'll message you later, buddy, because I was thinking about messaging you just to uh, heap praises upon you. So I'll, I'll do that sometime <laughs> this week. He, uh, I, so I think thank you is, so much. I think this is fair game. He texted me the night uh, that, that we leaked the Orville season four is, is mm -hmm. happening. And he said, I'm going to send you my therapy bill. <laughs> yeah, I know, Tom goes through a lot. I, 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 I've been chatting with him for God, since the beginning of the Orville. And so, you know, he, 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 he loves the Orville. He loves the fandom, but he gets a there's a lot of give and take that he has to go through of just yeah. working and then dealing with uh, <laughs> communicating with people and promoting the show and also getting questions from, from everywhere in the universe. Uh, I do have to say that I have to wrap this up because I have a family event. Uh, oh, unfortunately. That... But this conversation is just getting going, which means we have to do it again. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm wanting to make the union a uh, a monthly uh, uh, show here on, on the channel. Oh, I got a lot of monthly shows now because I'm trying to reach out. So every every month we're going to be doing a We Are the Orville, where the fans uh, of the Orville and myself get together to talk about the Orville. I'm going to do the Union, where fandom leaders and people that are making Orville content get together. Uh, we also have the Orville RPG uh, uh, tabletop game that we're playing every month. Uh, you'll be guided to that live show uh, to, to set your alarms right after this stream is done. And, uh, and then of course, dumb old me, 
talking about the Orville all the time to promote. And then eventually we'll get into some interviews with cast and crew and, 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 and things like that as we get closer, but it's a little too early for that right now. But I want to thank you guys for showing up. Uh, let me know, let us all know where we can find you guys. What are you doing Orville style? Let's start with Elise. Uh, you can follow Phoenix Development on Twitter. Link in the description. We, link in the description. As we uh, leak new content and new uh, uh, gaming things that we're doing. So, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Eric, what you got What you got coming up? I have, um, well, to be honest with you, I'm in a movie ca called Surge of Power, Where There's Smoke, and I'm appearing with Tom, Tim Russ. I'm appearing with Robert Picardo, Sam Jones, Michelle Nichols is one of her last films. Um, it's coming out later this year during the summer. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I'm very excited about that. Um, also, like I said, we're going to be probably doing some quick shorts. A lot of people have been asking about planetary conversation, uh, planetary discussion, my, my, my little side thing of the Orville. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm planning on bringing that back. There has been footage that I have filmed, and we are eventually going to be bringing it back. And also... I'm going to have some big news later in the year that a lot of people are going to be. We I already kind of shared it with Mike, Elise, and, and JP, and PJ. I'll share it with you later also. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to want to be on board with this when when I make the announcement. But um, as like JP and Elise said, all my information is in the description below. Please follow, support. I, I, as I always say, please support, support everyone on this panel because we are the union and mm -hmm. we're here to stay so yeah. like again i, I and, and and i gotta thank jp especially because jp that this is oh. the best idea that you came up with and bringing you've always talked about wanting to bring people in the community together and this is the best thing that you have come up with so thank you so much sir well for thank you it was all about just getting out of my own way because you know I'm, I'm like everybody else we're like oh, i don't want to talk to people i don't want to get people together <laughs> and try to figure out the times i'm like just do it PJ, what do you got going on? Well, I'm, I'm just trying to get back to normal. Uh, sorry for being so fidgety in my seat. It's just hard to stay still. <laughs> You're fine. So uh, when I'm just starting to gonna get back to streaming probably in a week or so. So that's All right. Cool. We're looking yes. forward to catching a live show. Mike, yeah. what do you got going on? Well, I mean, first of all, uh, Tom said that Peter Macon wore your shirt at least today, and now everybody wants one. So the, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, nice. that's, that's, uh, that's what Tom said. Um, uh, ML underscore the Orville for Mission Log the Orville on the Roddenberry Podcast Network. Uh, you can find us on YouTube.com uh, slash Roddenberry as well. Um, podcasts.roddenberry.com. Uh, where where the, the the slate of of podcasts is growing, uh, latest uh, one is well, second latest one is called Will It Fly, which discovers or it looks into sci fi technology to see if it's feasible or not. And Jessica Lynn Verdi and I, since we've been granted a little bit of shore leave from the Orville, we're discussing TED in a series called Talking TED on the Rodney nice. Podcast Network. And that first episode drops this week. Uh, we've got Seth McFarlane as our guest on that. And then we've got uh, Max Burkholder, Scott Grimes, Alani Ubach, um, Georgia Wiggum, all all lined up or already recorded as a guest to talk about that seven episode uh, series there. And that is sponsored by Bear Fight Whiskey. So thank them for uh, us being able to do that. And I thank them for the product that they sent me. So yeah, it's made, nice. it's made this a lot of fun. Uh, uh, and we, you all, know, we all want Bear Fight Whiskey. Yeah. yeah. And I'm on, I'm on Twitter at mrichards1701. Excuse me. X. X. Uh, X. Yeah. That's right. Don't forget the X. <laughs> all right, you guys, I want to thank you for, for joining. Um, I'll set up uh, another union uh, show uh, next month, as well as all the other shows that are going and new ones to come. And I got a special one I'm, I just thought about yesterday. I'm, I'm going to be scouting some fans, some specific fans of the Orville. So if you're a specific fan of the Orville that I'm scouting for, keep a look at because I'm going to find you and we're going to talk about a, a special thing uh, later on in the summer here. Uh, but I want to thank all of you guys for showing up, everyone uh, for watching and continuing to support all of our content and talking to Orville content. But more importantly, just support 
the Orville. We need season four's audience to be huge and undeniable. And, you know, getting people to watch the Orville, you're doing them a favor. You're doing that person a favor because you're giving them something wonderful to watch and to think about and to live in. So we'll see you all very soon. Remember, we all do better when we all do better together. Love you. Bye-bye.